amongst some of the most feared men in the country is one who doesn't wear a patch but an infamous label that he's been branded with for the last 25 years. Today, Mark Stevens walks as a father and alongside the mongrel mob as a brother. And he's talking on TV for the first time. You used to be considered one of the most frightening criminals that walked the streets of New Zealand. The Parnell Panther. And some people probably still think that. Well, I think you'd have to ask my 80-year-old neighbour that lives across the road that I painted her house is whether she thinks I'm this big, bad ogre. Like I said, it's, it's about perception, eh? And the perception is only reinforced by the trademark shades, the tats, the leather and the swagger. But what's changed is not only his name, he now calls himself Mark Tipene, but the faces he presents. There's the manager of a labouring company called Rentabro, set up by the Mungle Mob's notorious chapter. There's the youth worker in South Auckland, helping teenagers get licences, skills and jobs. We're wanting to get inside these brains of yours and, you know, and open it up to what I believe is sitting there. There's the net worker, invited to dine with millionaires. And there's the face of the Parnell Panther, a name and a history he's trying to erase. I've done some bad things, but I'm not a bad man. You know, I'm not a bad person. You know, and I'm not here to convince society about whether they, you know, I'm telling the truth or I'm not telling the truth. To this day, the police are convinced Stevens was responsible for a North Island reign of terror in the early 80s. Brutal intruder rapes of eight women, they say, in three different cities. But he was only convicted of one rape and one serious assault. Okay, I'm watching. I'm Let's go. Fifteen years on, he's living a comfortable middle-class life on Auckland's North Shore, sharing his life and future with lawyer Cheryl Tepine. What have you been doing, wife? Together they have a daughter, Y, nearly four. And he is father to Kelvin, aged eight, and an adult daughter. I am the person who married Mark Stevens. The Parnell Panther. Mm. One could label me nuts or really naive. But those that know me know that I am not a naive person, that I'm not unintelligent, that I'm not one who re wears rose-coloured glasses. Take them to the movies. Who would have thought that 15 years after you got out that your life could be so good? I've never really looked or dreamed about where I would be in, you know, 15, 20 years' time, you know. Just had to sort of really deal with what was in front of me. So he finally got around to asking Grandma. Today, Mark Stevens is travelling with the mob and mingling with the establishment. He's at a prison reform hui, included, not excluded, for his sins. Pitching to the judges and prison officials who used to lock him up. Welcome especially, Mark Stevens. Speaking about his childhood of poverty and violence, from the age of four he was subjected to sexual, physical and emotional abuse, even being caged in a dog kennel. It taught me a behaviour to, to distrust, but mainly to survive, to really hate, and nothing mattered. By eight, he was living on the streets and then made a ward of the state. The progression of incarceration went from boys' homes, boar stalls, mental institutions, and then to prison, where he learned to read and write through comics. And long before the legend of the Parnell Panther was created, Mark Stevens would notch up a hundred convictions, mostly for burglary. Just used to basically um, rob, pillage, plunder, 
and basically stole till I was tired. In mid-1983, Mark Stevens was arrested for a string of unsolved rapes in Auckland, Hamilton and Wellington. The news was out, a criminal was christened and the hype unleashed the hysteria. Nobody else had the label that you had though, Mark, did they? We've had a lot worse offenders for the crimes that I was convicted of, a lot worse, yet they're not being given a label. Mark Stevens was originally charged with eight rapes, and police say the crimes were strikingly similar. But this was before DNA technology was available in New Zealand, and the law regarding similar fact evidence back then made it harder to prosecute. In the end, he'd faced just one charge of rape and one of assault that he'd later be convicted of. The police say it was overwhelming evidence, and two juries believe that in two different trials. The police were prepared to stop at nothing to get a result. For me, I believe they were after a result, whether the person, namely myself, was the right one or the wrong one. It was a better result. Mark Stevens was sentenced to 12 years. And he'll be a free man. In 1991, no Stevens was paroled amidst <laughs> media hype and controversy. Tunnel's trendy streets became a savage nighttime playground for the man the media dubbed the Panther. The community feared it would be a matter of months before he'd rape again or even murder this time. Calls will be concerned for the public when he does come out. He was released late this morning. Ever the operator, Stevens took it upon himself to reassure the public. I think uh, I need to give uh, the people of New Zealand the reassurance that um, they have nothing to fear. And amid the chaos, an oasis. A community worker called Sam Chapman and his Bible school on this historic property in Howick. He took Mark Stevens into his life, knowing the convicted criminal's background. For us, he was just Mark looking, looking for some way, looking for something. They'd met briefly years before in prison. Sam Chapman had been doing God's work rehabilitating prisoners. And when Mark Stevens got out, Sam offered him a job. Not only did they take him on, but they also took him in. Sam Chapman, his wife Thelma and their children gave a home to a criminal the rest of the country despised. Yeah, we get phone calls out there, you bring this monster into our community and all that sort of stuff. And, and we understood that. We understood the reasons why people would react. Well, yes, he was a convicted rapist. Yeah, and, uh, you know, they, they, but this is who and what we are. To, to love all of those who are rejected by whoever, by society. And, uh, and as the was saying, you discover un underneath all of that rough stuff, yeah, precious diamonds that exist. And the risks were huge. Thelma was a Pākehā woman, like his victims, and daughter Hannah was just 12 at the time. She vividly remembers the day Mark Stevens arrived. I was actually home sick. Um, and I was upstairs and my brother came and told me that there was a rapist downstairs. Um, so it took me a while. <laughs> a rapist? He, said, he actually said a rapist. Yeah. Um, but I was hungry so I eventually, after about two hours I think, but once I actually went down to, to meet him, it was a different story. I've never been scared of him. We built up a sense of, of um, not naive security, but but a confidence in what we were capable of. A, conf a, a confidence not only in ourselves, but in our faith. A and there was a peace about that. Some people would say it's naive to let a convicted rapist into your home and let God take care of the situation. We weren't foolish. I mean, we had, if you like, safeguards in place. The rules are very simple. We respect each other and we respect this place. There's no, no descriptive word that could ever express the gratitude, you know, 
just the way that he received me with with that with, you know unconditionally really and that's what he did sam and his wife thelma now live in otara surrounded by four generations of their family and those who need their help they both grew up in christian homes and for more than 30 years they say they've taken in the lost, the last, and the lame in a program they run called Project Uffy. Mark Stevens was just one of the hundred or so who have lived under their roof. But this controversial lodger stayed for nine years. And for the first time, the Chapmans say he experienced what it was like to belong to a family. For a long time, he just watched because he said, I remember him saying one time he'd um, never had a fam you know, the family environment. And we gave him a birthday cake for his birthday one year, or the first year he was with us. And he could never remember having had a birthday celebration. Just sitting at the same table was a breakthrough for this man. After being beaten by the women in his family, and then forced to return to his violent childhood home by a female social worker, Stevens refused to eat and interact with Thelma for a long time. How difficult was that? I mean, this was your own home and this was your own family and he was living under your roof. You have to give him space after what he'd been through and come, where he'd come from. When I did find that out, it, it just made me realise what a remarkable woman she is. That he wouldn't talk to her and he wouldn't sit at the same table, like I said. Um, I don't know if I could deal with it myself and still allow him to live in the home. But that changed. How much do you thank Sam Chapman for what he's done for you and your life? I don't think that there would ever be a word that would describe how one would feel how Sam has influenced my life. Both Sam and his wife Thelma are, are, are extraordinary people, and I and I don't say that lightly. You know, I, you know, it's with um, great thought as to who they are as 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 people. It was through Sam Chapman that Mark met his future wife Cheryl. She was then a law student and is now working as a barrister in South Auckland. Do you ever have any doubt about? your position in terms of the man you've married and had a child to? No. I've, I'm not afraid of him. I don't fear him. I know what I believe to be the truth. I don't expect others to, to see what I see. How did you make that decision? Christ. When I met Mark, our relationship wasn't based on infatuation. I sincerely believe that his, the genuineness of his heart came through. Everything about his past was revealed through his mouth as a Māori, I've always known that God is real. We've all heard that one so many times before from people who have been inside that God has helped put the wrong right in their lives. Over the years that I was locked up, I saw men using the, um, the God card to get out of jail early. Um, no one could ever accuse me of using the God card because um, instead of getting out early, I got out later. <laughs> Cheryl's used to what she says is the prejudice and the judgments. Her own career was threatened. There was a protest to stop her being admitted to the bar, but she stands by her choice and stands by her man. Was there ever a time when you asked Mark for the truth and you were given the truth? I never asked him. The day I met Mark, 
we sat down and he told me his life story from when he was a little boy through to the day I met him. He left nothing out. How do you know he left nothing out? That's a huge act of faith. The only answer I have for you is the same one I gave you. It wasn't anything but the Spirit of Christ witnessed his truth. He's now 44 and he's got all the support he needs, but he still has to play the tough guy. Can't you afford to just mellow out a bit? I mean, grow up, throw away the dark glasses and the tough boy act. When push comes to shove, hey, you know, and a lot of people have been doing a lot of pushing in my life, you know, and probably the only safeguard that I've had has had to chuck their persona up to say, you stay over there and I'll stay over here and we'll be okay. But that stance keeps getting him into trouble. Since he's got out of jail, he hasn't offended against women, but he's clocked up more than 20 other convictions, mostly for driving and for altercations with police. We just love to hate each other. Unfortunately, you know, it does make Cheryl's job a lot harder by the way I react and, and act with the police. But, you know, um, one of the things that I, I um, said to her from the outset is what you see is what you get. Mark Stevens has proved everyone wrong so far, but many people will ask how a criminal can change his future when he has never admitted his past. Go. And I guess there are going to be some people out there that will always look at me and say, oh, he's not remorseful, he's not remorseful. Well, you know, my question to that is, how can you be remorseful for something that you know you haven't done? The law courts made a judgment, rightfully or wrongfully. Uh, society assumes that the courts were right. He was punished for that. That's over. I've never questioned him about that. To me, that's, that's finished. I've paid a price in more ways than one. And, and um, you know, spending the best part of 20-odd years incarcerated in institutions throughout New Zealand. Do you expect people to have any sympathy for you? Absolutely not. No way.